I'm so happy I painted up all these Tyranids last year, so I'm ready to go with a full combat patrol. I can't wait to use them. Oh, there's a new combat patrol in the Leviathan box. Get out of the way, Tyrant nerds! There's new models in town. Welcome. My name is Ollie, and this is my hair. It's a little wild, as some of you may have noticed. I'm hungover. My hair is as hungover as I am. With the release of Leviathan, there is a new Tyranids combat patrol, and I've decided that I'm going to paint that up for this week's video. The Hive Mind, aka Meg, has decreed that they should be painted up as Hive Fleet Leviathan, as she really loved the test termagant that I did a couple of weeks ago. You can catch that video somewhere up here. There's a mere 30 models in this combat patrol compared with the previous 44, so this should be absolutely no issue to get painted up in a single week. Right? Right? Starting from a white prime and a coat of off-white, all the models will be following the same opening steps, with a few details differing in the later stages. This is including the Mega Nom Nom Psycho Phage with his giant open maw. Go away Space Marines, this isn't your video. There's plenty of painting left before we get to the details, starting with Reichland Flesh Shade thinned down and layered over all the fleshy parts. I did experiment with Carabag Crimson at this stage. As I mentioned in my previous tutorial for Leviathan, this will probably be closer in shade to the actual box art, but Meg decided that she didn't like it, so Reichland Flesh Shade it shall be. This won't be the last time you see Carabag Crimson in today's tutorial though. I had a bit of help at this stage from the ever-present tentacles of Hive Queen Meg before moving on to the carapaces. For these, we started with Vallejo Purple mixed with Black. Nagaroth Knight from Citadel would be a good alternative. I painted this over all the armor plates. Being careful not to get it on the white from before, but if I did make any mistakes, came back in with Off-White and Reichland Flesh Shade. Before we get to the most striking part of today's scheme, let me know in the comments what you are working on as your current hobby projects. Right, let's get on with it with some highlights on the carapace. Using the Psychophage here, as he's a nice big canvas to demo on, the next color used was just pure Vallejo Purple. I applied this in streaks or patches towards the edges of the armor panels. I then added white to the purple and used a fine detail brush to apply lines of this lighter color to represent the rapid growth lines of the chitin, as this is a beast born out of necessity and rapidity by the hive mind. Rapidity, is that a word? It was then just a matter of doing this on the other 29 models, and for this I shifted to the front room to get some entertainment while batch painting. While Past Ollie does that, on the community tab here on YouTube, I asked you guys what you thought I was going to be making my video on this week. Wrong answers only. My favourite answer comes from longtime viewer Matt at Screaming TC that I'm branching out into competitive hungry hungry hippos. Thanks Matt and everyone for your comments. Let's get back to the paint job. So Hive Queen Meg and I made a really good start on the guys yesterday. Um, we've got all of the guns painted red. I've finished off all the purple lining on the backs. So now it's time for a big batch of black for the claws and hooves. Let's get to it. Any guns were simply base coated with carmine red and then washed with Karaberg crimson. While I was getting on with this, something even worse than the shadow in the warp descended on my flat at dinner time, resulting in this horrifying apparition. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. After being booted back to the hobby room and with the feet, hooves and claws all base coated black, the models are looking pretty good. Let's next focus on the Von Ryan's leapers for some more details. I applied Carabag Crimson, there we go, told you it was gonna come up again, to all the joints on the bodies and also the weird alien lesions all over the arms. I'm never quite sure what these are meant to be, so if you do happen to know, please leave it down for me in the comments. I took Carmine Red and applied this to the underside of the claws, but also used this like the purple from earlier over the black parts as well as using it for an edge highlight. Here the Vallejo Red paints more transparent coverage actually worked to my advantage. It allowed a gentle transition between the black and the red, and I used a final highlight of Scarlet on the Von Ryan's Leapers and on the Terror of Vardengast, the Winged Tyranid Prime. The Termagants they're just going to stick with the red, as it's not really a prominent detail on those models. And then it was on to the eyes. For all of the models, these were recess shaded with Agrax Earthshade, before applying Off-White and then Lemon Yellow. For the Terror of Vardengast, I also had his jazzy wings to sort out. 
I used my airbrush to create an ombre between Caraberg Crimson and Reichland Flesh Shade, starting with Reichland Flesh Shades all over the wings in a thin layer, and then using Caraberg Crimson just towards the tops of the wings, I managed to get a really cool transition. I'm really happy with how the effect came out. I then went over the arms with off-white and treated them like the rest of the bodies of the models. Let's finish off by looking at the largest beastie in this combat patrol in a bit more detail, the Psychophage. He's got his Psyche belching fume towers on his back, which were painted white and then glazed with blue, ice blue, and then ice blue and white to get a wispy smoky effect. Focus the lighter colors around the tops of the plumes and make sure you keep your paint nice and thin here. With that, the models and the details are done. Now there was a comment on one of my previous videos that I almost never get my models based and I think that is completely true. Um, so today I'm going to be breaking the habit of a lifetime and getting these models based. It's a particularly good time to do so as Meg has come up with a cool new idea for them. I first applied PVA glue before using cork board to add height variation across the base. I then covered the bases and the cork board in PVA and dipped the whole thing into coarse sand and small stones. Once the PVA had dried overnight, I applied a base coat of black primer, leaving some of the sand and stone color showing through so it wasn't completely matte black. To this comes the fun part. Geek Gaming Scenic's Volcanic Island and blue crystals of varying sizes stuck onto the bases with PVA. These were applied as large standing crystal clusters as well as by sprinkling the smaller crystals into blobs of PVA. And then after a few cleanups with a toothpick and painting the base rims black, here they are, the Vardengast Swarm. Another epic Tyranid painting challenge done. What's your favorite model that I painted up this week? Let me know in those comments. Now there is another combat patrol in the Leviathan box, which I was hoping to get around to this week, but the Tyranids have taken more than enough time. So we'll be doing that next week and painting them up as some Lamenters. Pretty excitingly, we've got the Librarian in there too, who has a slightly different color scheme. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss when that video comes out. And thank you so much for watching. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.